Hey everyone, my name's Xavier, and welcome to Godhood, the auto-battling roster management god game. Last week I did a let's try of this game, and it really stuck in my head, and I wanted to play more. Uh, so this week, we're doing a full, impossible, ambitious playthrough. It's gonna be, I think, a lot of fun, but let me tell you a quick story about uh, the impossibility of this game. So on Monday, I decided to record a let's try of this game. I played for 25 consecutive attempts on Impossible, and I failed the second mission 100% of the time. 100% of the time. Uh, I learned all the mechanics of the game, I feel, very, uh, very well, but it was indeed impossible, so I wrote the developers a letter, and within 48 hours, they had already patched it. Uh, as of today, one of the patch notes in 0 0.15.9 is that impossible is no longer impossible. And we'll see if that's the case or not. Now, I've played quite a bit of this game this week, so in any event, we're gonna go for a new game. And just a quick post-commentary announcement. I've decided Saturdays are now Strategy Saturdays. We're gonna do a strategy game here on YouTube, and as this video goes live, we'll be doing a strategy game on twitch.tv slash xwins. This week, it's XCOM. Surprise, surprise for those of you in the know. In any event, I think this is going to be a weekly Saturday thing. Saturday a strategy. No, strategy Saturday. Anyways, here's the video. We're going to play on Ambitious, which means once we lose, we're dead. And when we run out of skulls uh, and lose a sacrament, game over and only one save file. I won't be loading at all. It's going to be Iron Man, essentially. And impossible. Behold, the Butter Boys worship Lord Buttered on high, God of the melted butter, with a simple fervor. Let it be known. We're going to be playing the War Commandment. Now, I've actually only played the War Commandment. Now, I did try once or twice in the other commandments, and they're pretty interesting, and they play out wildly differently. And I think one of the things I like a lot about this game is the potential for massively varied playthroughs that are relatively uh, similar gameplay, but completely different um, playthroughs as a result of the different commandments and religious developments. Uh, this time around, we're gonna go for Given to Savagery. When we get 50 Butter Boys, we will gain Disciples, getting Totems for Might. Beautiful. Uh, now, my go-to strategy on Impossible is take the character with the lowest hit points. Zuma here has four. Marathu has two. So I'm going to put Marathu in right now to gather the Butter Boys. Uh, this will give one experience, and then I'll do that again after the Sacrament, and then the Sacrament will give two experience, and voila, after our first Sacrament, we'll have two characters who are uh, both ranked up to classes. Sokalo? That sounds a lot like Sialo. Female, here you go, I guess. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we're all renamed. Piril, Amit, and Sialo are ready to crash my enemies. And now we're ready for the first sacrament after passing the three turns. Now, I should say I'm going to go a little light on the explanation of the mechanics and talk more about strategy since I delved into the mechanics last week in the Let's Try. Uh, but first, let's go crash the southern jungle. We shall gain 45 Butter Boys, which will give us enough to hit Give In to Savagery. Looking at the roster here, this one's physical damage and this one is morale damage. I want to put Puriel against the physical one. Uh, and then it, the other two doesn't make much of a difference. Roll. Soka Ledger. Soka Ledger. Imperial hitting for 10 out of the gate. Oh, what puny condemn damage. All right. Easy game. Now, when I was playing Impossible earlier in the week, the next battle, I lost 25 times in a row. It was basically impossible. We'll see if we can do it uh, this time around, however. So my plan for this playthrough is going to be very similar to the strategy I used uh, this earlier this week. I want to have one Dark Executioner, and then 
I'm gonna go for a single life guardian. And then lastly, we're gonna get a second dark executioner. And the plan will be to combo very high offensive physical damage while also having a defense here with the one single guardian. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways you can play this. Uh, and that's what's really exciting down the road. Very excited about that for this game. Oh God, let's just say I'm excited, shall we? <laughs> please, please make me sound not so stupid. I'm excited, boys! We've completed our first religious development, unlocking the new initiates, who have a chance now to have uh, totems of might. Ah, and there's one right there. Aww. Well, that's... <laughs> Me, the rat. Uh, that's not at all what I was looking for. Good, good, good. Might, cunning health. Might, cunning health. Good, good, good. It's all basically the same then between the two. I don't need either one of these right now, necessarily. Now, my plan here is Cielo needs to come into the Butter Boys. Gather the Butter Boys for one turn, one experience, and then we'll have a level up. Fantastic. For the religious development, I'm going to go for martial religion. Because when we got a given to savagery here, this is going to enhance our character's ability to have might totems. Cialo! They're yelling to him in the village, you guys can hear it. Uh, but martial religion, when we do miracles in farmlands, hunter's lodges, and herder's huts, will give us additional might. So yeah, I'm going very strong, very aggressive, very physical damage. 125 butter boys for that one. Alright, now. This is where I lost a million times before. Speaking of, with this experience, let's have Cielo level up. I really do enjoy the Executioner class. All right, now let's go see what we had over here. We have the Dark character and they're weak versus life. So let's put Amit, who is a life character right here. He'll most likely attack over there and they have a weakness to him, so he'll deal additional damage. And then lastly, we'll just put Puriel and Cielo in these slots. And this should be, should be a victory. Yes, the villages are coming in. Yakula! Yakula! Puriel's like, wait, wait, let me explain. So the warrior's, uh, the life guardian's ability is to cast a wall, healing themselves once, and then also giving them physical resistance. Wow, they're getting really lucky with these blocks here. Nightmare is a nightmare. Come on, boys. Woo! Cielo hit that for exactly what we needed to hit to win that in that round. Yeah, so when I was playing before, this was literally after the first round, a loss almost every time. And at the start of the second round, one character would go, loss, guaranteed. So definitely they have changed the game quite a bit. And it's now difficult, you need to plan, you need to think it through, but it doesn't seem to be completely and utterly impossible anymore, which is awesome. Yes, your tribute's 45 Butter Boys. So we're now level three. As a result, we get one more assignment slot, meaning we can have two disciples working per turn. We've also unlocked the Materials Gather, which I feel is the most important building in the game. You can put someone in there to gather materials towards your tribute, and then you can go collect those during the sacraments, which are the battles. Miracle XP over here from the study. And lastly, we can recover hit points uh, in the gardens if we were to build that building. Hi -yo. Hi -yo. Ah, Amit must take part in a sacrifice or a sacrament, rather, to feel appeased. Very good. The longer he doesn't do this, the more this debuff will stack up. So, this is what we want. Materials Gatherer. Now, this is one of the two main resources in the game. You have materials and you have ritual offerings. I'm going to put them side by side, because I will oftentimes put units into those buildings uh, to gather them. Of course, the main resources is Butter Boys, but I feel like you can slack off on this one a little bit. 
the other ones seem to be exponentially returning. So let's talk about the strategies I've learned so far that are effective on impossible. Number one, upgrading the materials gatherer to produce even more materials per turn. If we upgrade this one for 80, uh, once we hit God level four, we'll collect 10 more materials, upgrade this one down here, we get 10 passive, even if we're not using it, and then upgrade again for those turns, we wanna have two people gathering something like 15 each plus the passive. That's a really good investment, I feel. Perhaps even a little bit too good. Uh, the next strategy involves uh, building, which buildings you're gonna give for miracles. So for us, since we're military focused, I wanna go farmlands to increase our might. I want all out DPS. We'll put the farmlands right in here. Voila. There's two things we can do in the farmlands now. Uh, number one, we could put someone in for their free miracle that they have charged up, but it takes four turns to do that. When it's done, they get the farming miracle. Or we could pay 50 ritual offerings for them to go in for one turn and get the exact same effect. Uh, ritual offerings are limited this early, so going in for the, the bigger one is usually a little bit better. But this is the point of the game where I probably want to initiate one extra character uh, so I can have one person working around the clock on these four turn things while the third character is going out in battles. Well, looking at the characters, I'm going to go for this one. Neither rat actually over here. I like the seven might, six cunning, seven health, very strong. Let's initiate for 25 ritual offerings. Go rename little knee. I'm gonna call him Zany after Zany Droid. Who I've seen in quite a few streams, uh, not all that infrequently recently. So the plan is Amit wants to go on the sacrament. We'll send him this time. We'll have Cialo then spend four turns. You can click on over here to select them. You don't have to click on the faces. Took me a while to learn that. He'll go for the Fauna Miracle. Zany down here has zero out of six experience. We have to train him up. Let's get him doing very basic tasks like gathering materials. Now, if you go into the orange zone here, you get one debuff on a character, which for three actions makes them uh, have a, a mood penalty. And you can keep doing that beyond the first one. You can have two, three, four, I think, or maybe even five debuffs per turn if you really wanted to. Uh, the problem with that is, is that A, it brings down their effectiveness, but with the morale being lower. And B, every one of these debuffs you have reduces your awe points, which is basically your, uh, your hit points when you're in the sacraments. Which can cause you to lose relatively quickly if you try to overstretch by spending too long. So for now, I'm just going to try to spend one, two, three turns every single time and perform the sacrament right when we're in the green zone and trying not to hit the orange zone. So we have three options here. Number one is a repeatable quest over here for materials. Another one over here is also repeatable, which gives us plus one experience points. And then down here, let's see what these guys have. Ah, they have a druid. Now the druid you will see is weak versus dark. So if I were to put Pyriel here, I believe he does double damage against the druid or possibly it's 50% bonus damage. Either way though, this druid hits like a truck 10 to 12. Woo! And then down here on these guys, they're attacking physical for 7 to 8, 7 to 8, 7 to 8. Same thing over here, 7 to 8. These guys are no slouch. I really do feel like the smart move here on Impossible is going to be to farm up some of these guys uh, on the side, these repeatable quests, while they're a little bit easier, and then come here later. Now, you can see we have one Crystal Skull remaining. Meaning, once we we're, any anything we do is going to use that skull. Uh, but if we use that skull and we lose one of these missions, the game is over. I believe we can lose these repeatable missions and the game doesn't end. So we're going to be very careful to make sure that when we do do this one, we are going to win it. And we need to strategize so that that's a possibility. There we go. Let's farm up the uh, experience. Yeah, this is much weaker. Much weaker. These guys are hitting for three to four morale, six to seven morale. And this one's hitting for seven to nine. Much better. Plus this one's dark, who's weak versus life. So we put Amit right in the front. This one hits harder. Imperial has more hit points at 50. And Seattle is still busy here on the sacrament. So we'll probably take Zany. 
Uh, we'll put him up there against the lesser godless who doesn't have a good chance of killing him with his 40 hit points. Imperial down here to tank. This one's far more aggressive damage uh, than that one's. Also, what is this? Punish the feeble. Follow up when an enemy performs a clouded action. I don't believe we have clouded actions. All right, this says challenging. Hopefully, this will work for us. Okay, I'm just going to heal up with the wall. Increasing physical damage. Woo, Imperial hits for nine. Zany hit for two. Big doom on Amit, but that's okay. Only for six. Okay, we didn't do too much there versus the, the life. I thought we would do more since he was weak to life, but alas. Getting close, getting very close. Big hit, please. Whew. Thank God, Imperial hit that. We were two hit points away. Two hit points away from death. Now, I'm not exactly sure about how characters decide who to choose, but it seems like the vast majority of the time they attack directly straight forward, and sometimes they'll attack someone else. Uh, also, characters have a block chance where they can jump in front of that attack. That's a totally separate mechanic. In any event, Amit's miracle is charged. He's now happy that he got to go on the sacrament. And we're done. Now, it may have made sense to buy another disciple if I wanted one, so they would have gotten that extra experience point. But I'm not too convinced that I want another one uh, from the current initiation pool. So, the Fauna miracle is now done with Cialo. Boom! Giving him one more might. And he's now got War Reaper. So he's got a 20% chance for this and an 80% chance for his basic Merciless Strike. A blessed be Cialo. The War Reaper is just a lot more to damage is all. And instead of having a minor might bonus, it has basic might bonus. Uh, I now understand what was happening. So Amit doesn't get the bonus uh, in the last battle as a result of fighting a, a dark character when he has life. He only gets the bonus if the ability he uses gives him life damage versus the dark character. And all he had was physical damage down here. That makes a little bit more sense. I learned that here looking at Zany, who deals ancestral physical damage as one of the specials down here, whereas the other ones are just physical, physical, physical. So anything that's weak to ancestral damage, uh, Zany would have to have this particular ability. Now it makes a little bit more sense to me. Regardless, I'm going to make Zany into yet another executioner. And the reason is, as time goes on, our characters will get older and need to be replaced. And I'm going to start working towards that now, knowing it's going to happen in about, I don't know, 30 turns or thereabouts. I'm a little bit worried about Amit's health here, but let's put uh, Zany in for the farm miracle that's free over time. Looking at experience, Puriel is three away from the next level. So if we put Puriel into one thing now and then the sacrament, he'll be leveled up. And the only downside is the next battle, Amit will have very low hit points. But I think that'll be all right. Cialo does not want to take part in the next sacrament. If he does take part, he's going to be very sleepy. He's at 40% of the time he's going to fall asleep. So what I'm going to do here is wait one additional turn. During that turn, I'm going to put Amit in. Damn it, the sight's already full. Never mind. <laughs> right, if Seattle wants to sit around for a while, I suppose what we can do is put him up here. He can sit out this next sacrament. Now, we're going to wait for Zany, but we're going to go into orange. So someone will get this debuff. Yes, the Butter Boys are being talked about in hushed tones. They will understand soon enough. Zany has performed the rain dance, and look at that, boys. It's raining. Zany's faith bent the sky to their will. That's so cool. Oh, okay, new abilities. We got Rend this time. Not quite what I was going for, but that'll work. We've also got plus two might, plus one devotion, it looks like. And here's the debuff, Doubt. Active for three missions, negative 20 faith. Cialo is down. 
But it's all right. If we let him rest, he'll get rid of that uh, that sleepy thing, and it won't be a problem. So right out of the gate, this guy hits for 12 to 14. I want him mostly attacking Imperial. Let's go there. Also, Ancestral does more damage uh, to life. And these are all Ancestral abilities. So unfortunately, we have to put Ahmed in. Let's put him over there. Uh, because Siala wants to take a nap. Put Zany down here. And then hopefully this one doesn't attack Ahmed. Because he will deal a ton of damage. And Ahmed is already low on the life. If we lose, we lose the game. Because we're out of skulls. Okay, Amit. This is important. Nice, nice. If that had hit Amit, it would have been double damage. Ooh, he crit over there, too. This guy's nervous. They're all scared. They don't know what to do. The combined sight of Amit and Imperial. And Tim... Ooh, zany crit. Boom. All right. We easily could have lost that if... Uh, if we didn't plan that out better. No thanks to Cialo wanting to take a nap on the job. Hmm, I didn't look at this. I'm five butter boys away from the next reward. It may have behooved me to wait one additional turn and suffer one additional doubt as a result uh, to get that for the next sacrament. However, we do have a little bit of time here. So I can keep doing these missions, but you can see this one we can't do again for five more days. Uh, this one I can do right now if I were to want to. Am I prepared for this one? We have 30 total awe points. By the way, every doubt that we have will reduce this uh, awe point by one. And if your character goes out of hit points, you don't lose the battle. Uh, it only, all that matters is your total awe points for the battle. I've determined that I think I can take on the next battle. So one strategy was to build a garden to heal our hit points on Amit because he's a little low. But I think we'll be all right and take a little bit of a risk here. Instead, I'll put our materials uh, into... F oh, I was going to put them into forest gathering, but now I realize we can't because we're not god level 4 yet. I think we will be when we hit this next one. Another reason I should have done that. So we'll put Pyrial in for the farm miracle, and we'll wait one additional turn. And that one additional turn will be absolutely perfect for Cialo to come down here. And gather more materials. Mmm, Pyrial is doubting! Behold, Pyrial. The farm miracle. Beautiful. The war reaper. We can now teach him a passive because he's level three. We're gonna go for a plus two might. I'm gonna focus more on might and not on this rend. Uh, rend is based on cunning bonus and might increases uh, the reaper and also the whirlwind attack. Blessed to be Puriel, the time has come, boys. We shall take on the frontland of the ancestors. This guy is weak versus dark ability. Cialo has a 20% chance to use a dark ability. Puriel has a 20% chance to use a dark ability. He hits for 10 to 12. Puriel has more hit points, so I suppose we'll put him in. This one hits for very hard physical damage, so I would like to have Amit on the roster for defense, since he's a defensive character. And then lastly, I suppose if we happen to attack here, it makes more sense to bring Cialo than Zany. Possible. Soka lecha. Soka hit the 20% chance there. He used his dark ability and did double damage for 36. I'm not even sure if he crit or not. All I know is we did an insane amount of damage. This time he used the regular ability. But that's all we needed. We needed that one 20% chance to go off, securing the victory. Boom! Now, we get one free building at this point. We can either prepare uh, ourselves against physical defenses in the future, or against morale defenses. Since I'm going highly physical with a physical tanking tank, essentially with uh, one of these guardians on every one of my rosters, I'm gonna choose to go morale defenses for free. And what this means is we'll have a building we can use to temporarily increase our morale defense. Ooh, we got three crystals here. Uh, but yeah, we can use that in case we find something that does a lot of morale damage. We can temporarily buff ourselves to maybe have a good advantage about countering it. Ah, uh, 
Uh, most religions teach prayers. We teach killing. The martial religion, boys. All right, this is the second most important building, the ritual offering, which allows you to gather those towards your tribute. The other three buildings aren't so useful right now. And we can increase our disciples by one to six, but we don't even have a fifth one yet, so not a big deal. Woo, lots of things going on. Let's click the disciples first. Hmm. Unfortunate. I was hoping for a really good one over here. He's not too bad, Eisel, but he's also not really what I'm looking for. Now, here's our free building. Like I said before, we're going to go for the mental fortitude. It takes 25 materials. Oh, I thought it was free. Apparently, it's 25 materials. Uh, basically, we can stick someone in here if we want to. It'll take 15 ritual offerings. It only takes one turn to do this, but then we will have plus 10 morale armor for the next mission. So if there's something that deals a lot of morale damage, we can buff all three characters who are going to go on that with this at a cost, but that's one way we can push through. So everyone now has the farm miracle. Made it rain during a drought. This one said, bless the harvest, plus one might. Rain during the drought is plus two might and one devotion. Fancy, I didn't know there was different outcomes. Apparently there are. Uh, Amit's miracle is charged, and Imperial also did the wondrous farm, uh, what's it called, miracle of making it rain during a drought. Plus two might, one devotion. Let's put Ahmed in for the free one here. He's not looking all that strong, to be honest. Oh, wait a minute. Did I pay for this building when I could have gotten a free one? Uh, whoops. I was wondering why it costs money. Yes, so now I have two of them by mistake. Whoopsie daisy. 152 materials. Let's upgrade the materials gatherer. Now we're the right level. 80 here to get 10 more materials on upgrade. And then hopefully we can get this mining one next. Uh, I'm going to go for Purge the Weak. New initiates will now have a 25% chance to gain Purge the Weak, which gives us plus 15% damage to dark abilities. And since I'm going largely executioners who have two dark abilities, that is very nice. Plus we get plus 50% additional chance for initiates from Savage. Now... During the tutorial, you're kicked out of this. This is where our goal was to come all along uh, after the tutorial expulsion. The Butter Boys had originated in this town, the old city. Let's take a look at it and see just how difficult it's going to be. They have a stubborn elder, level 11, who hits for 11 to 12 morale damage. Wow. They have another stubborn elder who is divine, does more damage to Ancestral. However, we don't have uh, Ancestral. Lecture when an ally scores a critical hit, and then also lecture 12 to 14, and a free lecture, apparently, every time someone else critically hits. Whoo, 16 to 18 morale damage. That is absurd. And then up here, we've got another stubborn elder who appears to be of the nature tree who is weak versus dark. I want to pump our dark abilities up quite high. This is ridiculous. They've got three entangles and they've got two uh, nature damages over here. 10, 10, entangle does basic physical weird, weird other categories. Now, one thing I want to point out is that uh, our executioners generally have the ability to ignore kind abilities. So none of these are kind. That's what I'm checking for. Whew. All right. Well, this is also... They have more hit points. Oh, 88 awe points. And we have 50. This is going to require some strategy for sure. Let's look at this one, which gives us a common relic. Okay, they have two ancestral characters who have almost no abilities. Just physical... 14 to 15 physical damage, though. And that's 13 to 23 if they manage to pull off the blind strike. Holy mother of goats. Well, we can't go this way. Uh, is it possible to come over here to get the ore deposits? Woo! Maybe, but uh, let's wait a little bit. So lots of 
Lots of morale damage there too. Oh boy. Let's come back and do one of each of these missions to learn some experience. Just terrorize the peasants, as they say. Cielo and Zany are very important. Um, it can keep working on his miracle. Boom. Wonderful. Amit's um, also done the wondrous farm miracle and picked up wall as a result. Fantastic. So he has the wall ability already by means of Ever Vigilant, which gives him one free use of uh, the free wall ability. But now he can cast wall 20% of the time, which is the exact same thing, healing himself and increasing physical armor. So the plan here is simple. Zany and Cielo go into multiple training sessions in town and then also go on one sacrament and they should both level up. We're going to need another building to dedicate our second miracle to. And I believe my plan is to go for, I suppose, cunning. It's uh, partly crit based. And then I think it also reduces crit chance on you as well. Uh, so with this in mind, Cialo could come down here. Uh, we can come down here to the hunting miracle and do the cunning one now, filling up his second miracle slot. Another thing I'm saving up for is the upgrade to the farmlands, which gives us plus one might, plus one health, which we'll get uh, at 200. And we're at 139 now. So we need to put someone over here. It's going to be zany, I suppose. Mm, this is perfect with this extra materials bonus. Voila, we'll hit 200. Now, I've been farming these towns for about three attacks, which means I've, I'm out of crystal skulls. However, I've built up my squad a little bit. If I lose a single mission now, game over. Uh, however, I thought it was worth that r taking that risk to hopefully increase our, increase our chance to kill the next town over here, which is going to be pretty crazy. Bajuka. 50 50. Even match, except. Whoo! Amit just healing himself up. Except we've got Imperial. Aww. He tickled Perio. Look at these guys with the tickles. Easy game. Cialo returned with three fat swine. Very good, Cialo. Very good. Wondrous hunting miracle. Plus two cunning, plus one knowledge. And he's now unlocked war wind. And we can now grant him an ability. I'm going to go for might because both of these things are based on might bonus. Blessed to be Cialo. He's leveling up, boys. Now, we've got the 200 materials that I wanted just barely. Let's come to the farmlands and upgrade this. I think everyone has the farm miracle. This will give plus one might, plus one health to all such characters. So Imperial's Farm Miracle is actually plus three might, one devotion, one health, because it's a wondrous miracle. Well, I've had to think about this for a long time, but I realize there's just too much of a chance fighting against either this one here for the relic or this one here. I'm not even thinking about this town. I'm going to have to come back here and farm even more. Now, you might be wondering, why not just farm them forever? Just level up your guys forever. Well, because we've already played 12 years and characters age in this game. Bill started out at the age of 33. He's now 45. Pretty soon he's going to be getting old and not too long after that he's going to die. So, it is inevitable a normal game runs 200 turns. So you do have the ability to farm as much as you want, but at the same time, your characters are gonna be dying off as you do it. However, I just don't see any way around it. These guys are far too strong and we're just stuck here. We're gonna have to dig in and spend a bit more whiles on this. Now, again, I could have, I've been farming this disciple plus one experience points for a while. I could have additional disciples. I got two slots, 
But I'm really thinking that my next perk here, Purge the Weak, gives my new disciples 25% more chance uh, for the Purge the Weak buff and 50% more chance for Savage. So we can get way better initiates after we get one more rank here. And that's going to be the goal. One more farm. Let's see how it works out. Woo, that's our first whirlwind right there. Amit's doing an incredible job here. He's got high physical tanking with health. He's blocking and then reducing their damage substantially. This is exactly what I wanted. That was a good example of A, the potential of uh, the Waterwind Executioner ability later on, the AoE attack, and also Amit doing really nice physical damage resist for the whole team. Purge the weak. Ah. Zany only got the regular hunting miracle for plus one cutting, but unlocked Waterwind, and we can give him Might on top of that. So at level three, they get to choose. Or I think actually when they get two miracles, they get to choose one of those two abilities. Zany done did good. Now, now we get to hire new disciples. Let's see what happens. That's more like it. Now we've got Purge the Weak. We've got Purge the Weak over here. The totem is major might on Isma, with good cunning, good health. That is exactly what I want. Isma, welcome to the squad for 25 uh, ritual offerings. Isma is a feminine. Let's name this, I think, the new feminine rain. And I think it, when it rains out, you put on your, your red and your yellow poncho. Right, rain? For religions, we're going to come down here. This is where our special warrior building unlocks, the Temple of War, where we can perform incredibly awesome miracles of fire. Obviously, I'm going for that. 200 butter boys, rock and roll. <laughs> well, Puriel's coming up on 50 pretty soon, and these guys just look far too challenging. So I'm going to farm a little bit more here in the town. And the goal of this is going to be to unlock R Rise as God of Savagery for the super awesome Temple of War. We can put his final uh, miracle into that and maybe Imperial can go out swinging as they say. So the way we're going to do that is go to the town center. Uh, we need to get more Butter Boys as fast as possible. Looks like the best one here is plus five passive Butter Boys gain for 120. Awesome. And then we'll keep farming materials and Butter Boys uh, until we can buy this next one to get three upgrade every time we work at it. And then we'll keep leveling up rain and Amit as we do it. Amit's also getting old. I think I'm going to have rain pick up the horn here of the new guardian. Just hold the line, as they say. Aw, rain on performed a farm miracle and not a mighty farm miracle calling down the rain oh well oh boys Puriel wants to take part in a sacrament before it gets too old Puriel grows gray ah, well he is now old he is not long for the world it will his debuffs will lower every two years as he gets older well, this was the penalty I paid for farming so much, but now I feel like we've got a half-decent chance. These guys are pure physical, and they deal more damage to life, which is less than ideal, and they still deal quite a bit. Uh, let's take a look at what it would look like to put Amit here away from the two life dealers, Puriel down here as the ultimate damage, and Cialo down here. It would look very hard. I'd have to think this through to see how promising it looks, but let's look at this one and see if we can't pull this off. So they basically all do condemn, but keep in mind that our uh, executioners are immune to kind. And this ability here, these blessings, they deal 14 to 16 damage, but look at the category. It says kind. Ergo, Puriel will completely laugh that off. Preach over here is also kind. All right, well, if that's the case, if we put Cialo here and Puriel there, uh, and then this one's going to screamy weemy, that's fine. We'll just go all executioner, and this should be relatively... Decent. Should be, I tell you. 50 hit points or 50 all points versus 63. If we lose, 
Game over, and we've been playing this for an hour and a half, getting ready for this battle. Let's see. Oh, chale! Come on, boys! Crash! 13. Oh, nice whirlwind. Whirlwind! What are the chances? Oh, yes, he rolled the kind one. We're immune to it. Beautiful. The chances of getting double whirlwind was 20%. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. 20% on each one of those. Very low chance of... I think we still had a one regardless, but that's awesome. Ooh, well, we strategicized that one not too bad. Well done. Rise as god of savagery. The temple of war. Yeah! This is what we've been waiting for. The temple of war. This is our special building. Let's put it in right there. Now. Dun, 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 dun. For our next development, we can either do take war captives. Uh, actually, that's the only thing we can do right now. We haven't unlocked the next one yet, so let's set our eyes on that then. Now, if I had expanded faster or I was playing on lower difficulty, I think I would have already have unlocked the next tier, uh, which would have been... I would have a choice between animal focus and death focus. We'll get more uh, on that later. Hero's getting older by the day. It's going to take 50 ritual offerings and four turns. But he will gain the bonus of might, cunning, and health if we put him in here. Boom. Let's do it. Uh, and additionally, let's take a look at this building to see what the upgrades are. Divine aim improves all miracles in your religion applies to war priest. Violent abilities gain 10% crit. Additionally, we can do this one down here as well. Improves all miracles in your religion applies to war priest. One might, one cunning. And that's in addition to what it's going to do down here of three might, three cunning, one health. Woo! That's a lot! I probably want to save up for the sharper weapons, I think. The raid led by Puriel was bloody and glorious. In the thick of battle, Puriel, possessed by Lord Botted on High, single-handedly defeated ten warriors! Imperial asked Lord Butter on High what to do with the defeated tribes people. Well, we have three options. One gives us 25 butter boys, one gives us 15 materials, and one gives us 10 bloodlust. And I can't say I have any idea what that is, so kill them in my name, Lord Imperial! Yes, the exalted war priest miracle. Five might, four cunning, two health. And he's picked up Ren now. We could teach an additional passive. Use Ren on your first turn if there's an Ancestral Disciple on your side. We actually don't have an Ancestral one. Use War Reaper in the second round if there's a Dark Opponent. Well, that's going to be more likely than the other one. So there we go. That is 24 Might, 20, 19 Cunning, 12 Health, and... And we're not even done yet, because I'm going to come over here and I'm going to spend more to get sharper weapons. Boom! can't even tell you. He's up to 25, 13, 20. Let's see what we get for new initiates. Okay, we got a club. Might and Cunning with also Purge the Weak. Not too bad. Not necessarily fantastic, but not too bad. We'll hold off on that. Now, we really need to push ahead because Piro's getting seriously old here before he dies. And so the time has come. Girl is getting older. Let us go and set our eyes upon a common relic. This is not going to be easy. These guys deal 14 to 16 physical damage. Whoo! They're weak versus divine, and they deal more damage versus life. So if we're going to bring Amit, we're going to put him up here. Girl's going to be down here as our absolute key all-star MVP. I'll throw Cialo down here. It says challenging. 50 versus 63. Technically speaking, the only thing they do that does more versus life is their blind strike. And that's only if they use it against Amit, which is very unlikely. Everything else is physical, so having them here is likely a benefit to us. Well, we got no crystal skulls. Let us pray. 
<laughs> the melted butter is look how many there are. We got butter sticks on their head. Cialo, he said. All right, boys. Boom! 16 rend. Yes, Amit, thank you for the block. Oh, Amit, carry it. Amit, carrying us to victory there, double blocking. Not only does he that half the damage that they deal, but Amit takes less damage anyway because he has more health. Oh, yeah. Well, we paid for that one with strategy, and I actually made it look way too easy. But all it takes is one loss. Game over, though. Let us have Puriel. Bless the Dark Relic. Oh, a flower, Puriel. Jeez. Thank you, I guess, you little wimp. <laughs> like, why would you give me that? Get out of my face with the flower! One thing we actually haven't built yet is apparently the offering stockpile. Let's throw it up here. This will allow us to gather said offerings, which is exactly what we need right now. Offerings and materials. The offerings we can use to send Amit to the Temple of War. How old is Periel? Ah, oh, it grows gray! Not good, boys. Not good. Is it possible that we could take them out right now? Their tribute is ginormous. This is simply too strong, and I have an idea on how to defeat it. So what we're going to do instead is one more to farm. I suppose we'll go for the materials because experience is worthless to us. Okay, here's the plan. We're going to put Amit in the big temple, the war priest, 50 ritual offerings, four turns. Takes a while, but he will come out a veritable champion. Meanwhile, we're going to use 50 of our remaining ritual offerings uh, to send Puriel here to morale armor for the next mission. I believe I'm going to send Cialo as well, but we can't quite charge him. This only takes one turn. So there we go. Puriel's charged up. We'll now send Cialo on the exact same mission. Right there. It's going to blow through our ritual offerings, but gives us a good chance to defeat them. Awesome. Whew, we're going to, we're going to wait one extra turn here for Amit to finish his miracle. It's gonna give us one debuff. Okay, it actually went on Amit. Cialo grows gray too. We're gonna have a bunch of old men. War raid miracle. Amit is the fires of war. Yeah, he did a lot less there with one, one, one. But he's unlocked another wall, which is ridiculous. Eventually, I actually wanted to go Might with him, but he's so old at this point, we'll just go Health. Blessed be Amit. Uh, we do have enough resources here to increase, once again, Divine Aim. So everyone who has the War Priest, Violent Abilities gain 10% crit. Boom. This is as good as we can get, boys. This is as good as we can get. That one doubt is unfortunate, but not a huge deal. Let us see if we can take our home island back from the Crazy Elders. This one's weak versus dark. Cialo has the most dark abilities. Cialo goes there. Easy enough. These ones shall condemn. Well, we're going to probably put Puriel down here. And I did bring Amit, who has... Uh, you know what? Amit doesn't have the armor. Let's put Puriel down there. Amit has the, uh, the, the miracle we just got. But Cialo and Puriel have the defense against... against Divine. Hmm... It's a tough call. If we leave Cialo here, he can deal extra damage. But if we pull Cialo down here, he takes less damage. So, tough. I suppose this will have to do. If we lose, game over. If we don't, we crash! 40 versus 88. We are here. I wonder if this went down because they're old. I'm not sure. How they, look at all the old man punial. All right, these guys have nature's defense. 10 morale armor. Doesn't matter. We're not doing morale damage. 
Boom! Merciless the strike, 18. Um, it heals again. He's got 50 resistance against physical. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo, which means he can tank like a champ. At least against the physical. Oh, but he's being questioned! Oh, no, no, no! Come on, boys! We need Biggin Dimash. Boom! Come on. Yes! Amazing moves! Damn it. One hit point away. Wow. One, if we had one more hit point, boys, one more hit point, we would have survived that. I think we actually didn't have the hit point because old, I think, removes all points, and I wasn't aware of that. I'm pretty sure it did. It's a new subtle mechanic I have learned. Well, that was an hour and 37 minutes. I'm really glad that it was that close and we almost did it, but we actually lost. This is super inspires me to play more and come up with new strategy. Oh, I forgot to assign my relic. Well, it's the Flower of Charisma, which really, it might have done just enough to have reduced damage by an extra two points. Maybe. Forgot to assign it, unfortunately. Lord Botted on High, the Radiant Star. Technically speaking, I think... I'm not, not, actually, I think it's a charisma buff, so it probably wouldn't have done that. Whew, regardless, though, this is where this game shines. Impossible ambitious. Wow, does this game shine. So many strategies, thinking things through, rotating the characters, deciding to, like, wait for their old or not. I'm not sure if I should have, but at the same time, if I didn't, would we have died much sooner? We really stack some good abilities. Lots of things I can think to do a little bit differently. We could play with different characters on the next time. What a fantastic game. And that's only one quarter of the game. If we beat that island, then we have another island after that, another island after that, and another island after that, including multi-sacrament uh, bases towards the end, where you have to fight through not one, but actually two sacraments with, I think, the same group of characters. Whoo, that was fun though. Even in our defeat. Poor old man. Poor old man Puniel didn't carry us to victory today. But alas, we had a fun time regardless. Anyways, here's an outro that Bravo Wolf prepared. Tally ho! Whoa! <laughs> hit the 20% chance there. He used his dark ability and did double damage for 36. This time he used the regular ability, but that's all we needed. We needed that one 20% chance to go off, securing the victory. Boom!